an atman to control the mind. In the same way that the master of a kingdom controls the general and the general controls the soldiers. There must be an atman to control the mind and there must be a mind to control the body so that it may enjoy the five objects of enjoyment. 2. Moreover, as each person possesses his own mind, we know that there really is an atman. If it were only due to a mistake about the body and the mind that we assume an atman, why would we not produce the idea of an atman in regard to another? Thanks to this sign, we know that each one possesses his own atman. Answer 1. If the mind controlling the body, there were an atman to control the mind, there still must be someone to control the atman. If there were still someone to control the atman, there would be an infinite regress, as there would be still someone to control the atman, there would be two atmans. If there is no atman to control the mind, there can only be the mind to control the body. You consider the mind to be dependent on a soul, but in the absence of the mind, the soul has no object of consciousness and, having no object of consciousness, how would it control the mind? If the soul had the characteristics of a knowledge, why resort again to the mind? This is why we know that only the mind presents the characteristics of a consciousness. Therefore it is able to control the body and does not depend on a soul. It is like fire which, by its nature, burns things without the intervention of a person. Objection Although fire has the power to burn, it is not useful without a person, although the mind has the characteristic of a consciousness, it is not controlled without the soul. Answer Dharmas exist in so far as they have their own characteristics. Not having any characteristics, the soul does not exist. You consider the in-breath and the out-breath, suffering and happiness, etc. as characteristics of the soul, but that is not right. Why? Because the in-breath and the out-breath, etc. are characteristics of the body, and the fact of feeling suffering, happiness, etc. is characteristic of the mind. Why make the body and the mind into characteristics of the soul? Moreover, fire burns things by itself without depending on a person. We say that a man burns something only metaphorically. You have fallen into an untenable position. Why? Because the soul is the person and you cannot compare the person with the person. 2. Moreover, you said, each one possessing his own mind, we know that there really is an atman. If it were only due to a mistake about the body and the mind that an atman is assumed, why not produce the idea of an atman in regard to another? Without knowing if the atman exists or does not exist, you are asking why one does not produce the idea of the atman in regard to another. The distinctions between one's own body and another's body exist as a function of the atman. But the atman is non-existent. The characteristics attributed to it. Having form or formless, permanent or impermanent, finite or infinite, movable or motionless, cognizant or ignorant, active or inactive, autonomous or non-autonomous. All these characteristics of the Atman do not exist, as we have said above in the chapter on the Atman. For many reasons of this kind, the yogin considers that dharmas come from complexes of causes and conditions, that there are no real dharmas endowed with atman. That is what is called mindfulness of dharmas. f. Mindfulness itself by connection with or is object. The four foundations of mindfulness are of three kinds. i. Mindfulness in itself. e. Mindfulness by connection e. Mindfulness as object. I. What is mindfulness in itself? The wisdom that considers the body is mindfulness of the body. The wisdom that considers the feelings is mindfulness of feelings. The wisdom that considers the mind is mindfulness of mind. The wisdom that considers dharmas is mindfulness of dharmas. This is mindfulness in itself. E. What is mindfulness by connection? When they consider the body at the head of the list, the dharmas of the path other than prajna, coming from causes and conditions, impure or pure, are mindfulness of the body. 
when they consider feelings. The mind or dharmas as head of the list, the dharmas of the path other than prajna, coming from causes and conditions, impure or pure, or mindfulness of feelings, mind or dharmas respectively. This is mindfulness by connection. E. What is mindfulness as object? All dharmas with form, namely, the ten bases of consciousness and a small part of the dharmayatana are mindfulness of body. The six kinds of feelings, namely, feeling arising from contact with the eye, and the feelings arising from contact with the ear, nose, tongue, body and mind respectively the six kinds of consciousnesses, namely, consciousness of the eye and consciousnesses of the ear, nose, tongue, body and mind are mindfulness of mind. The notion aggregate, the volition aggregate and the three unconditioned or mindfulness of dharmas. That is mindfulness as object. Mindfulness in itself, having wisdom as nature, is formless, invisible. Non-resistant, sometimes impure and sometimes pure. These things are fully explained in the Sian Nan, the Thousand Aporias. Single quote. G. Inner, outer and mixed mindfulness. Dot. In regard to Kaya S-M-R-T-Y-U-P-A-S-T-H-A-N-A. What is the inner body? What is the outer body and, since everything is already included in the inner and outer body, why does the Sutra speak again about the consideration of both the inner and outer body? Question mark. Answer. One's own body is inner, another's body is outer. One's own body is of two kinds. I. The impurities inside the body, e. The skin, the hairs, the nails, the hairs of the head, etc. Outside. Furthermore, when the yogin considers a corpse bloated and rotting, he grasps the characteristics and examines his own body, saying, This body, too, is of the same nature, the same constitution and has not gone beyond this state of affairs, then. The corpse is the outer body, whereas the yogin's body is the inner body. If the yogin, possibly seeing a beautiful woman, becomes attached to her in his mind and then considers the impurities of this female body, it is a matter of an outer body. But if the yogin recognizes that his own body is exactly like it, it is a question of an inner body.